as picturesque as an old postcard, Canterbury Shaker Village was established in 1792. When you visit the community today, you feel as if you are transported back in time. It's just the most calming thing. Canterbury Shaker Village is a drug. It lowers your blood pressure. Canterbury was the seventh Shaker community. It remained prominent until the 1990s. The last Shaker who lived here, Sister Ethel Hudson, died in 1992. They represented ordinary Americans, mostly recruited, at least at Canterbury, from the surrounding towns here in New Hampshire, um, who chose to withdraw from the broad general society that surrounded them and to perfect their world. You know, they did everything in the most perfect way that they could. And they, they designed their, their buildings, they designed their furniture, they designed their, their agricultural fields and their barns and other agricultural buildings. They designed their little industrial complex, all in the most perfect way. Though not educated in terms of schooling, the Shakers were innovative and industrious. We use many of their inventions today, like the broom, the clothespin, even a commercial style washing machine. You know, they love technology and, and they were good inventors themselves. And uh, they invented things like a, a, a big washing machine that would wash clothes for many people. Mother Ann Lee founded the Shakers in 1774 and brought the religious sect to New York State from England. The group's founding principles were work, worship, and gender equality. Men and women shared the duties equally, families were separated, and men and women were celibate. It's been um, suggested that that's one reason why they were so long able to survive without having children and procreating, because the decisions were so wise and balanced. At its height in the 1850s, 300 Shakers lived here in Canterbury. 25 of the buildings here are original built by Shakers. The meeting house is where Shakers came to worship and dance. In fact, that is how they came to be known as Shakers, due to their enthusiastic movements when they moved their feet to music, a form of prayer. So much can be said and told um, about the Shakers through movement mm -hmm. um, and their music. They wrote over 10,000 songs just in Canterbury. The Shakers looked at hard work as a way to worship God, so everything they built and created was done in simple perfection. They sold several things that were very popular. The, one, the most popular things they sold were packaged seeds. They were among the first great seed companies in the United States. In the later years, they even they even packaged up baked beans. They cooked them in the bakery in the dwelling house, and they took them in wagons and peddled them all over the uh, southern part of New Hampshire. But though they worked hard, don't think the Shakers didn't know how to have a good time. They embraced modern amenities. Do you think they would have embraced the internet? I do, I'm sure they would. Any technology you could name, they would have loved it. And they did, you know, they had. They were the first in New Hampshire at Canterbury to have electricity because they set up their own generating plant. And they were among the first to have automobiles. They bought very fine cars. They had Pierce Arrows and Packard, some of the best, most expensive cars in the, in, in the manufacturing world. Um, as soon as they could get them. And they kept trading them in for better ones. <laughs> and they had a, they had a speedboat. Um, um, they had a speedboat? Yeah, they had a camp um, over on Lake Sunapee, and they had a, they had a big motorboat. Then they went, so when they would go over there, and this is in the 20th century, they'd go over there in the summer, have a little vacation at their big camp, which was more like a big house. And, um, and the few brethren who were left would, would, would uh, motor the sisters around the lake in this great big beautiful boat. There are nearly 700 acres here, nature trails, ponds, the land is open to the public, guided tours of the buildings are available. Executive Director Leslie Nolan said the first priority is to restore and maintain the historic structures. Some of the buildings really we might consider readapting for commercial use or residential use or a library or a, all sorts of things. We have so many ideas.
Although the Shakers are no longer with us, their legacy of hard work and innovative spirit continues to thrive today. The goal of the Canterbury Shaker Village is to share that ingenuity and their spirit of peace during a time when we all need that the most. There's a lot for people to see and a lot of it is basically free, but we, we hope that if people come there, they will absorb uh, something of, the, of an interest in, in the life of these Americans, these, these native people who, who converted to a very different, very much more uh, rarefied and purified kind of an existence and did it all you know, deliberately and thoughtfully. Mm -hmm.